future self-org. Resistance is futile. I do not believe resistance is futile. I believe resistance is voltage divided by current. Oh, wait. Wait a minute. Sorry, that's the wrong program. Hi, my name is Mr. Dave. We're here for the Makerspace Electronics Workshop, July 2020, where our project is going to be a four-arm flashlight. As you can see, I'm holding an example of the finished project right here. It has a white light which can reflect off of things. You can see it reflecting off of my name tag. It also can be changed to have a green light. So this is the project that we're going to be building today. First thing I'd like to do, oh, I also wanted to explain to you that uh, the inspiration for this came from seeing some things on a Star Trek episode where we saw Neelix with a flashlight on his forearm and we saw Chakotay and there are some other characters that have done that. This is also something you would see on a scuba diver's outfit where they don't want to lose control of their flashlight and they do want their hands to be available. So that's the inspiration for our project that we're working on today. Next step we're going to do is ask you to find your take-home paper. It should look about like this. And I'd like to ask you to write your name and today's date on the front of the take-home paper. It's important to have the date because it may want to look back at this in the future. The first thing under the heading forearm flashlight hands-on workshop is our two safety pieces of information. We're going to be using a hot melt glue gun today. So our first safety bullet says hot glue can squeeze out. When you're using hot glue, if you put plenty of glue in place and then you squeeze the items together to get a good bond, sometimes there'll be hot glue that squeezes out of the edge. It's very important to keep your fingers away from that hot glue because until it cools down, it could cause an injury to your skin. The other bullet around safety says that some glue gun parts are too hot to touch. If you're not familiar with your hot glue gun that you have at home, then perhaps you'd want to get an adult involved to be more careful. The glue gun that I have looks like this. The plastic is comfortable to the touch. But the piece on the end, which I'm going to point to with an ink pen, so I'm not touching it with my fingers, where it's a silver color, is the part that would become very hot. So you need to remember that some glue gun parts are too hot to handle. For a next step, I'd like you to open your take-home paper and locate the parts list. Please get a pen or a pencil or a highlighter and we're going to go through all of the parts that are on your parts list to make sure that you've got them and you can put a check mark as you find them. On the table, I've put all of my parts out here. So we have a wood base that looks like this. If you turn it over, one side might be blank or have ruler markings. The other side has an outline of where we're going to glue the different components. The next item in your parts list is your battery holder with the extra long wires attached. Your next two items will be closed pins. And your closed pin might have a copper strip that's between the jaws of the closed pin. So when you open it, you can find your copper strips. The other thing to notice about the closed pin is one of the jaws has a hole in it. The other jaw does not. That'll be important later. The next item on our list is the copper foil adhesive tape, which I've just talked on about. the other side. Then the it short also has a copper foil bar, bar, which looks like this. Installed on one side it has and on one LED other. on one side and, and two LEDs on the other. Someone has and it has copper on both sides that of the light stay bar. Together. So that you should also have four very small pieces of craft stick and a couple of rubber bands and okay. some batteries. Our first step under the instructions says to attach the copper foil to the closed pin. So we're going to start by taking a closed pin apart. And the way I do that is by twisting it apart. I'm going to select the part that has a small hole in the area near the jaw. And remove the release tape 
from the back of the copper foil and wrap it around the end of the clothespin where the hole is located and you need to wrap it on the side where the curved section is found. You can tell that by looking at the picture that's in your take home paper and you can see what I'm doing right here. I'm going to cover that section. So this is one side completed. And if you're keeping track of your steps, this completes step one all the way through letter D. Step two says to locate the red wire from the battery and insert it from the right side into the clothespin. If you insert it from the right side until you get to the end of the insulation, then wrap it over and send the wire back through the same hole. So now it's on top of the copper foil. I'm going to use my pliers to pull it so that it's really good and tight. And then I'm going to send it through a second time through the same location. And use my pliers to pull that one tight. And wrap it one more time and then twist it around the red wire. So this completes step two, three, and four. So step five says to put the clothespin back together. So we're going to put the clothespin back together with its spring in place. So we've now completed step five to put the clothespin back together. Step six says to repeat the, with the black wire using the other clothespin. So again, we're going to take it apart, apply the copper foil tape, And then once again, wrapping it from the right side, you go through all the way up to the insulation, and then go around and back through the same hole so that the wire is on top of the copper foil. And then a second loop. And then bring it back one more time and wrap the wire around so that it won't be out in the way. So this completes, and then we have to reassemble the clothespin. So put the spring back in place. Good. So now we have the battery holder wires are connected to the clothespins. And your next step on your take home paper says to glue things together. But we're going to do something special because we can. I'm going to suggest that we put it together electrically before we put it together with the hot glue. So if you take your two batteries out and now Clip the light bar in between the closed pins. I want to clip them so that the red side is down and the black side is up. It's very important that one side is up and the other side is down so that you don't create a short circuit. So after that 
light bar is installed between the closed pins, then in search of batteries. And you want to put the flat against the spring on both sides. And you should have a working light. If when you do this, the light is pointed in the wrong direction, then what you would need to do is take the light bar out and turn it over. And if you want the other light to be on, then you have to turn it around in the other direction. And now you know that you have a working light. If your light is not working, then make sure that you follow the instructions by having the one color up, the red down, and the black up. and that the batteries are correctly inserted into the battery holder. If the battery is being held away from the end, it will not work. The spring should push it in the correct direction. So make sure your batteries are being pushed all the way to the correct direction. So now let's go back to our take-home paper where it said to glue the red wire closed pin to the wood base. So let's take the batteries out. You're always supposed to have the power disconnected while you're building a project. And it's time to plug in our hot glue gun. When you plug in the hot glue gun, make sure that it is in a safe location so that it will not drip and create a problem and that it won't fall down. You may even want to ask an adult to get involved to help with that. So I'm going to turn on my hot glue gun now and let it warm up. This would be a good time if you've got somebody nearby who could take a picture. While the batteries are installed, you could get a picture of it while you're still building the project. So I'm gonna ask somebody to take my picture while I've got my project partly assembled here. Thank you. So while we were having the picture taken, that gave the hot glue gun time to warm up. Take the batteries out. And if you look very closely at the take home paper, you will see that the closed pin doesn't fit on the inside of the wood. It actually sticks out over the edge. So if you use the outline there where the word red is located, you can see that the closed pin extends beyond the wood base. And that's where we're going to use the hot melt glue. So we're going to apply some hot glue over the word red. And then we're going to put the closed pin with the red side down over that hot glue. And remember that squeeze out glue might be hot. So you want to be careful about that. The next step is to glue the black side closed pin with the wire up. So we'll put hot glue on the other side on the wood base. And then with the wire side up, we'll put this closed pin in place and hold it until it has time to cool and set. So you should have the red side down and the black side up and the wires in the middle. This completes step eight. So we're ready now for step nine, which is to glue the battery holder in place. There is a rectangle on the wood base that is the location for the battery holder. So put that in place and glue it down. And then step number 10 is to glue the short craft sticks on the back end. So you should have four short craft sticks to be glued in place. Be very careful because squeeze out glue might be hot.
this point, we have now assembled our flashlight, so we are ready to do the final test. The final test would include putting the batteries in place. And then installing the light bar. And we have a working project. If the lights are pointing in the direction that you do not want them to point, then you can just take it out and turn it back around. So we have a completed project, and I want to say congratulations on building your project. Always check your batteries to make sure the batteries are making good contact. Now that you've completed your project, let's get a picture of it. It's always fun to complete a project. Sometimes it's also fun to have a bonus. You probably have a bonus item bag that came as a part of your project kit. So in your bonus items bag, now that we have a working project, I'm going to ask you to go ahead and take it open and look inside. The first thing I'd like you to look at is the light bar that only has a single LED installed. If you look very, very closely at that LED, you might notice that it has three dots and a small rectangle inside. That small rectangle is a microprocessor. Those three dots are three LED junctions. So this LED is a very special LED. It has a microprocessor and three LED elements included. If you put it into your circuit and it does not turn on immediately, then try turning it over and put it in your circuit and you'll notice that it has a special effect. The reason I said to turn it over right away if it doesn't work correctly is because that microprocessor can be damaged if it's left connected backwards for too long. So this is a RGB red, green, blue cycling LED. So this is a very special type of LED with a microprocessor actually built into the epoxy lens. So that's one of your bonus items. The other bonus item, which is in your bonus items bag, is a long bar. This long bar has some different colors on it, and it has some heat shrink tubing, and it has some resistors underneath the heat shrink tubing. If you've been a part of earlier makerspace sessions, you might have learned about resistors and LEDs. And if not, then that's something you can look forward to learning about in the future. But right now, I'm going to clip this in. And you can see that this now has red on the left and green on the right for mine. Or if I flip the light bar over, I have a more effective flashlight. So now I'm going to put mine on my arm by putting a rubber band in place, putting a second rubber band in place, and then putting the rubber band around the back to hold that in place, and around the front to keep that in place. And now, if I have a task to do, I can pick something up and I'll have a light that will point wherever my hand is pointing. I hope you've enjoyed our project today. It would be good if you could send us a comment that says I made it or if you have any other comments to the library to uh, encourage us if you'd like to see similar programs in the future. Again, my name is Mr. David, and this was the Rapides Parish Library Makerspace Electronics Workshop, July 2020. Have a nice day. Mm -hmm.